If we talking looks, sound hooks, I'm the littest one. Just sent your wifey five a So fresh and fresh and clean. I keep it viewed on that Don Julio. Cause I be eating weed. Mm, what's up, y'all? So, welcome back to episode seven of Pretty Pert and Potent. I'm bougie, and I don't give a fuck. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, so today's episode is titled, I'm bougie, and I don't feel bad. And really and truly, like, it's kind of like a reclaiming of the word bougie. And, you know, saying, like, I am elevating, and I am getting to a spot to where certain stuff is just not going to be tolerated. There's certain stuff I just don't put up with. I don't put up with certain stuff in my friendships. I don't put up with certain stuff in my um, work life. I don't put up like there's just certain things that I don't put up with. Or at least if I do put up with it, I've reformed how I respond, what I give energy to and time to. And... Um, and, and just in any aspect, you know, when it comes to the social media stuff, um, certain discourse and conversations, I'm just not going to give it time of day. <laughs> um, so at any rate, um, you know, it's, it's definitely about growth, the maturity that I have found in the last few months. Um, the things that I'm, like I said, just boundaries, you know what I'm saying? Learning myself, learning boundaries. And this, I feel like this year of 25 has been very explorative and I'm, I'm liking that I'm seeing the darkness and the light. I'm not just seeing one or the other. You know, I'm a person who is very yin and yang. There's always going to be a balance with things. And I think that's when things work best, when there is a balance. Um, but neither here nor there. Without getting too deep on y'all, um, I want to be discussing that today. Um, so, you know, pretty much picking off what I said, I don't even know why I stopped talking because I mean, that's kind of where I was headed. But I, when I hit 25, I just had an enlightenment and you know what I'm saying? I, the an, an unfortunate part of elevation is. And real quick, I'm speaking from my perspective as somebody who is becoming a lot more comfortable with acknowledging the dark as well as the light. As I said earlier, yin and yang is necessary for a balance to be, you know, in ordered. Um, again, I'm not that deep of a person, but I just I, that, I, I just that's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? That's how I lead in life. Um and that's how I try to phrase my way of thinking. I always keep in mind there are nuanced to situations. Things are usually not path A or path B 100 um, percent or not 100 percent. But I say 97 percent of the time in life, maybe 97 percent is a bit much, but definitely at least 50 50. You know what I'm saying? Like people can do good things for bad reasons and vice versa. Um, but neither here nor there. Back to what I was saying. Um acknowledging the light and the dark when people are elevating there are some people who are just going to be stagnant they're not going to go anywhere they're not going to do better they're not going to work harder to get that raise they're not going to you know go to you know whatever trade school college whatever i'm not here to deify college like it's the best thing in the world because i think we've seen with the help of youtube and shit child you can go get your u degree from youtube university (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> don't get your degree from Twitter University, though, because, oh, Lord, oh, oh, the curriculum for Twitter is different. At any rate, um, better what I was saying, though. Um, it's just an ethereal experience when you're trying to move up and when you're elevating your way of thinking, but with that beauty comes a sourness that I don't think a lot of us want to acknowledge. Again, like I said earlier, when you're elevating, there are people who are just not going to be able to come to that ride. And I am in my, you can't sit with us era. And I'm so proud of that. Like I don't, I'm more bread, more purposeful in how I do things, how I move. I'm more, fiery spirited like I have I feel like I've regained a fight in me and a youthfulness that I haven't seen in myself in in years 
years. And I mean that shit. I just, that's just how I feel. You know what I'm saying? It could sound dramatic if you want, but me there or there. That's just how I'm feeling. Like, I'm real shit. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going through the motions, going through the motions, definitely. But at the same time, I just have a, a, a new burst of energy and I'm glad to see that but a new outlook also and um sometimes people are just not gonna ask acquiesce you know what I'm saying and I've spoken about this before um with the whole educate me situation and especially when it comes like race politics I feel like there's no need for you to be talking about people need to educate you. People need to drop links, which and that's another thing that I've had to realize with maturity and stuff. When I'm having social discourse with people online, there's just certain things I'm not going to even respond to or give time to um, give me links. Can you provide links? You know, if you ask in a certain way, maybe I might give you one. But if we're going back and forth and you're trying to be like a jackass because I'm going to give you this link and then you're not even going to read the whole thing or you're still going to stand firm on your shit. Like most people do not. Um, even if they feel they're wrong, they can watch the proof. They'll still go through and look like a fucking fool knowing they was damn wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like when you know how most people are, they're just a lot of people with well, this society, society does not condition us to be comfortable with forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Or grace or any type of, um, not, not, not forgiveness or grace, but what, what, what am I looking for? Humility. There we go. We're not socialized for it. You know, the minute that somebody gets read or put in their place, everybody's, oh, world star. And it's like, we don't even allow people to just, you know, take their L's, you know, um, and truly take them, you know, and actually have the accountability to come back and repent and do better than whatever, you know, prior behaviors they were exhibiting but at any rate back to what i'm saying there is a sadness and growth in the fact that some people will not be able to come along on that journey with you um some friends are friends for life and some friends are friends for um current sites yep yeah, that's what I said, and we're going with it. <laughs> but no, for real. Um, yeah, some some people are just not going to be able to come along with you. You know what I'm saying? And I and I mean that in every facet of life. You know, me personally, I can speak to myself only. You know, and me elevating my scope of the world. And me being more purposeful in when I speak and take stances on things, um, making sure that I have done the work to affirm the stances that I'm taking, um, whether that be, you know, speaking of blackness, you know what I'm saying, um, black progression and, and being honest about the realness, you know, we this black progressive conversation shit is much more than just hashtag BLM, like, A lot of y'all be one foot in with the shit. And it's like, we can't afford to have one foot in people. Not when we got ride or die people of non-black race. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That are more willing to, you know what I'm saying? Talk and listen and be heard. You know, if you've ever met a black person that switches up on colorism, but is there for all the conversations of racism... Baby, your palms is white, bitch, and that's all of us. <laughs> so, I mean, like, come on now. I don't know why I said that. That was weird as fuck. But y'all get just what the fuck I'm saying, child. That's another thing I'm getting more comfortable with. Child, I be saying weird shit. I'm a weirdo. Okay, Ian, bitch. This penis still good, though. Anyway, like, it's great. Penis still good. Wishing that a nigga would. And they foot up on their necks as a nigga should, bitch. I get my foot on your motherfucking neck, bitch. Okay. Tyson, calm the fuck down. So, anyway, that's what I was saying, though. Um, I definitely am just at a different space. Um, there's certain stuff I'm not allowing. I don't, there's certain stuff I don't want in my space. Um, I hold people to task on the things that they say. You know, a, a black man of my certain phenotype and stature 
gets a lot thrown his way that is not deserved and I haven't always been accurate in calling that out and I'm getting to a point where I'm handling that better and unfortunately a lot of those inappropriate situations happen while I was at work so it's like I really want to give you that angry black man bitch but I'm trying to act right (laughs) you know what I'm saying um Oh, it's a, it's a struggle. Oh, Lord. But at any rate, back to what I was saying, you know, and even internalizing those situations and times where people have said off the wall comments. And even though I'll never excuse something just because I can logically explain it, you know, it doesn't hurt to have that knowledge and that connection of why so and so says this, you know, um, and me coming to assess my relationships with um other men you know what i'm saying and how you know i i've really cultivated for instance like feminism i view that shit differently um which feminism is for white women but child that's another conversation another day but at any rate hey you guys if you would like to hear the rest of this podcast please check me out on anchor.fm apple Podcasts, spotify and all other podcasting platforms thank you for listening